Over the weekend, there's a handout posted on the website for a graphite grayscale. This is not the ideal one. I've got a better one in my office, but this one's like an A minus one. This is what you should be doing. Notice the exceptionally good craft. Okay, but this is what I want. Now, a quick graphite demo. It's so fast, the other class didn't realize I gave them a demo. They said, you were going to do the graphite demo. I said, I did it. Okay, here's the graphite demo. Don't use pressure to make it darker. You should use the same pressure all the time. To make it darker, use a, use a softer pencil. The 8B pencils, the, the higher the number on the B side are the softer pencils. The higher the number on the H side are the harder pencils. So like 9H is usually about the hardest pencil you'll see, and usually about the softest pencil you see is around an 8B. I think your set might go to 10B. I'm not sure. Um, but, and the HB and the F are in the middle. Don't ask me why there's an F. I have no clue. Um, <laughs> So, uh, let's see. So anyway, um, now the secret to rendering these things is to do, I'm going to do this really enlarged. Look at how my hand is moving. Now if you do this at the proper scale, it looks like this. Can you see yet why I hate graphite rendering? <laughs> yes. So when you do a grayscale, if you're doing a darker value, do you start with the softer pencil? No. You start with the harder pencils. You use maybe a 9H to do one pass on your grayscale. Then you use like maybe a 7H. Then maybe you use a 4H. Then maybe you use a 2H you build it up. Okay? Now someone asked the other day, well why isn't this one an A? If you look closely at it, there's a little bit of speckling. You see the little bit of speckling in it where you can see some white coming through the board? Yeah. That's They weren't using a sharp enough pencil to fill that in. Okay? Or they were jumping through too quickly through it. Through the grades of the lead. So you want to do it slowly, you want to do it patiently, it takes forever. But we're going to be doing the specimen project over the next month. I don't want you guys worrying about craft. I want you to get your craft here. Oh, one other thing too. Just this goes into kind of with like the shortcut discussion at the beginning of class. Um, <coughs> some people try to take a shortcut when they do this by comparing it to an existing grayscale. Don't. Any idiot can match. You know, any Home Depot paint guy can match two values and say that one's lighter than that one, that one's darker. That's not what you're trying to learn. You already know that. What you're trying to learn is, you're in the same way that you're trying to get a calibration for a cube and for an ellipse, you're trying to get a calibration for a grayscale. What's 30 degree, what does a 30% gray look like in your mind? Yeah, Carly. Well, I have a question about yeah. how many uh, values do you want to have? Uh, it's a total of 10. The first square is white, though. I think all of you guys can handle that one. Um, <coughs> um, what were we talking about? Nah. Sorry, I forgot. I'll come back to it. So, would you recommend doing like small squares of like individual pencils each? What? Would you do like? Would you recommend us doing like small squares of individual pencil like <coughs> rendering kind of thing? Yeah. And then, com okay. What I would do is I would do a whole. I would do a pass on the whole grayscale and then gradually darken it. You know, like square by square. Is, what? Is it no, it's squares. No, because see, this is what I want. So, square by square. Yeah. So, um, what, if, it, if you overshoot a value, do you just take a kneaded eraser? <clears throat> yeah, if you overshoot a value, take a kneaded eraser and just go like this, but do so carefully because you'll be making it more uneven and you'll have to go back in and even it out. Yeah, Brittany. What size for the squares? Um, all the specs are on the handout and the materials and stuff, they're on the handout that are on the group website. Okay. So look in the file section under homework handouts and it should be there. 
Um, yes. And um, so just another clarifying question. Um, should we we shouldn't mix pencils? Uh, not from <laughs> different brands. No, you should. I mean, you can, you can, no, you will mix pencils. You will have multiple grades in every square. Okay? But you should stick with one brand of pencils because the pencils are calibrated differently. So don't mix like general brand pencils with Verithin with another brand. Yeah. Um, for presentation, do you want it to be on like cut out illustration board like that? Yeah, basically I want it just like this and I'm going to be sending, uh, I'm assuming most of you guys for Cameron's class have, or for another class have already done flapping stuff, but I'm going to be posting a little slideshow of how to flap it. The other class was asking me, well, what kind of time should you allow? Um, if I were doing this straight up and I knew I know where I'm going, it would probably take me about two to three hours to do it correctly, so I would allow about five. Because two hours will get graphite down on the board, but it won't be right. Okay, and then you'll need to adjust it. Now, I would also allow, the flapping should really only take you about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, but I would allow an hour, you know, because I want it right. I want it exactly right. Don't leave it to the last minute or you're going to screw yourself. Oh, uh, one other thing, too. I'm going to be starting to pay a lot more attention to instructions. I'm going to be, we're a third of the way through the semester now, and now I, you know, you guys should be used to things. So, like, uh, you know, things like naming formats, size requirements, doing things vertically, you know, in the right order, things like that. I'm expecting you guys to read these things carefully and and follow through. Yeah. You will make a demo for the flap, though. No. No. I'm going to be sending you a, thing, a slideshow. Okay, that, that. Yeah. yeah. So we know what to do. Yeah. Um, for the OGPL submission, they're in the Verithin, right? Yeah, in the Verithin. Um, now, one other thing, and this one is not, it's, it's something that actually you can do as part of a homework assignment for another class. Um, let me check the time. Okay, perfect. Um, those kids drawing in the hall this week actually gave me a great idea for this class. And because I was talking to the other group and I was saying, you know, honestly, at the end of the semester, you guys should be able to say, sit down in a hallway like that, sketch out that whole, whole hallway in 10 to 20 minutes and have it be pretty right, have it be pretty correct. Now, right now, that probably makes you a little bit nervous, that idea. Okay, what I want to do is I want to spend the back half of this class focusing on how you actually use these tools to draw with. You know, drawing figures, drawing, uh, drawing environments, drawing anything you see, okay? So I really want to make it kind of a practical perspective class. So to that end, what I thought the first great step would be would be this. You can do this for another, like you can do it as a part of a sketchbook thing for another class, like if you're an Angelus class and you're keeping a sketchbook or whatever. Um, I'd like you to do two drawings of, say, some nearby environment. You know, draw this room, or draw a coffee shop, or draw something anywhere. You know, draw anything you see. Okay, but draw the whole environment. Don't just draw an isolated object. All right. So draw this environment, but really pay attention as you're doing so to your to what's going through your mind. So you're thinking, well, let's see, where's the eye level? Oh, the eye level's there. Is it? Or is it there or there? How do I tell? Okay, and basically what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to what's going through your mind as you do this. And it's not about the drawing. It's about the questions the drawing is generating. Because what I'd like you guys to do, be, what I'd like to be doing with you starting next week is you guys are coming back and saying, okay, John, I was drawing this telephone on the wall and I, I was realizing I didn't quite understand how this worked. How does it work? Or I'm drawing the tops of these things, where they connect. How do I actually know where the top is, where that cylindrical part comes out? Okay, I can show you all that. And what I, so I want you guys to start encountering some real world issues so that we can start discussing them in class and going over the perspective. Because honestly, after next week, remember what the one guy said after the next lecture, he said, I want to draw everything. Mm -hmm. Because after next week, you really, Everything we do from here on in terms of the perspective will be um, derivative in some way from ellipses or cubes. You saw reflections, shadows, wedges, um, you name it. It's all derivative. You know, spiral staircases, it's all the derivative from cubes and, um, and ellipses. Would you say it's a good idea to also include like, any like, living figures in the thing? If you want, I mean, what I really want you guys to do is just 
see what questions come up. Like, wait a minute, that person's there and that person's back there in the picture. How do I tell which one's taller? You guys should know that one already. You know, but you see, I mean, like, okay, well, if that person's that tall, how tall is that tree? You see what I mean? So I want you guys to start thinking analytically like this about your drawings and pay attention to what questions come up because I can help you solve them. All right. Um, all right, now you guys, I think that's everything. But I have this feeling I'm forgetting to tell you something, and I don't know what it is. So, um, the other classes, they were doing 20 additional cubes over the weekend. You know, but you guys don't have to do that. So if you see anything about that, ignore it. If I remember anything, I'll send an email out. Yeah. Um, actually, oh, that's actually something I do want to mention. Um, you won't really need to turn them in. I'd like to be able to see them. And I would, and it would be nice, I was also thinking one other thing that might help. It might be helpful if you guys actually take a photograph of what you drew, if you have a camera with a, with a phone capability. Just, um, yeah, you could. I mean, maybe photocopy it out so we can put it on the crit wall and talk about them. But I'm not going to collect them, and it really isn't about the drawing. It's about the questions. You know, I just I want you guys to basically run out, draw something, trip and fall. And um, then I will pick you up and put the bandage on. Is that. there a specific time you, you want us to to draw for? Like, do you want us to sit there for like twenty minutes or like? Um, two I'd hours? like you to draw an environment. Okay. You know, now these don't have to be big. They could be tiny. But as long as you're starting to analyze, like one of the girls in one of the other classes, she tried to draw her friend's kitchen. And she realized she didn't know how to work some things out. So I showed her real quick. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, because it's so stupidly simple. But she hadn't realized that some of what we were doing, how it applied to actually drawing a kitchen. You know? <coughs> Does this make sense, you guys? Again, where I want you guys to be at the end of the semester is I want you to basically be able to draw anything out of your head, put a light on it, and make it convincing. You know? So that's the goal. So just keep it in mind. Now, if I, again, so watch the Yahoo group. I may send out an additional email if I forgot anything, but I don't think I did. I just have this feeling. I, it's throwing me off because you guys are on a different, you're not synchronized anymore, and it's harder to keep it in mind. All right, you guys, so have a good weekend. Don't forget, Saturday is the Pixar thing.